Hi, I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday. It is July 24th. I had a look at the calendar. The year is 2023. This is a special YouTube premiere, which means I'm here with you in the live chat, and I would love to answer your questions for you. I'm going to teach you in easy steps tonight how to make an expanding gatefold card that cascades. I know it sounds complicated, but it's really simple to create. And I've got lots of ideas for you, including extra cards that are some samples to share with you. Now, you're not going to want to miss the free project sheet that I have linked for you down in the video description below. That's going to lead you over to pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies for all the cards I'm going to share with you tonight, including the one that I'm demonstrating. Now, we love to interact with you if you're here in the live chat or if you're watching the replay but YouTube does require that you log into your YouTube account to comment or chat. So please go ahead and do that now. That uses your Gmail address. And then finally, I wanna take a minute to introduce you to that name in blue, Grace Hudson. Grace is my moderator here on YouTube while Gina Hawley is on maternity leave and she's here to provide you links while I answer your questions. So please do interact with us. All right, we're ready, let's get started. You're gonna need a piece of eight inch by 12 inch cardstock for this. Now I chose balmy blue because I have a feeling it's gonna show up a little bit better on camera. So let's start with our paper trimmer because we're gonna do some very simple score lines and you're gonna to need to have a mechanical pencil nearby and I love this one. You all ask about it. The lead is very soft and the eraser works extremely well and I have this linked for you on my website under shop craft room favorites. So the trimmer includes both a scoring and a cutting blade. They stay on the track at the exact same time. They navigate up and down out of the way. And you'll see that there's a ledge here at the bottom as well as the top to help keep your paper straight. And I love this trimmer because of the clear cutting guide. Now, all these features are gonna be really important for tonight's fun fold card. We're gonna be using designer series paper with this as well. And I've got some tips for you on how to add those panels. So you're going to turn it so that the 12 inches here across the top, and we're going to do some simple score lines. The first one is going to be at two inches. So I'm using that ledge to my advantage, lining it up at two, and we are going to score. Then we're going to move over to four inches. And now this is where I'm going to pause because now you're going to need the pencil. This next one, you're actually going to make a mark versus score. That's very important. Slide over to six. And then I'm gonna put that pencil right down the track and I'm gonna make a very light score line. Let me make it a little darker so that you can see it. Oh, probably not dark enough. Let's go back over that again. All right, now we're gonna do two more. This is where the extendable arm comes into play. So if you're a scrapbooker, you're gonna love that. We go just past 17 inches here, trying to stay within your camera view. And the next one is gonna be eight inches. And then we are going to score and then 10 inches and we're going to score. Now we're going to turn it this way. So this is now the eight inch side and we're going to put it back in the trimmer, but this time we're just going to do some marking. So I love to use this as my ruler as well. It's all one thing. I'm going to open it up and we're going to line it up at the five and a half inch mark, which is here on the left hand side. Once you've got it aligned and it's straight across that ledge, close the arm and you're going to take your pencil and you're going to make a little mark. And I'm going to make mine kind of dark so that you can see it. It's here at the top. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna navigate down here to the bottom. Let me move some things out of the way. I've got too many stamps here ready to use with you. There we go. We are gonna navigate this now to two and a half inches. Now here is one reason why I love the trimmer. Not only am I at two and a half at the top, but do you see it here at the bottom? And I'm gonna close this. And once again, I'm gonna grab that pencil and we're gonna make a mark. I'm gonna make it kind of dark so you can see it. So just to go over that with you again, it's five and a half inches at the top, two and a half inches here at the bottom. Now here's the best part. It's just a matter of connecting the dots. So we're gonna cut from this dot or mark to this one, so on a nice diagonal. Now you might be thinking it's not gonna fit. It is a little bit long, but it does work. And I'm looking to align this with inside this dark track here where I know the blade is going to travel. Here we are, we're at the bottom. And of course, we're here at the top. Once everything's lined up, that is going to give you two pieces. If for some reason it doesn't cut all the way, don't fret. Just come in with your scissors and just trim off a little bit of the excess. 
Now you're going to end up with these two pieces and now this is where all the magic comes into play. So in essence, these are going to connect so that the card can expand and cascade. Now again, I made that pencil mark very dark so that you can follow along with me. Let's go ahead and let's crease on those score lines. So there's one here and there's another here. You're not going to crease on the pencil mark because remember, that's just a mark. So we're going to skip that and then come back on these. It does not matter what direction these go in. So don't worry about that. We can always invert them. I'm gonna go over that with my bone folder to create those nice crisp edges. And we're gonna come over here and we're gonna do the exact same thing. And then on the second one as well. Remember, don't crease on that pencil mark. Now that we've done all of our creases, what we're gonna to have to do now is create some slits. I'm gonna eyeball this because it's the easy way and quite honestly, it comes out better. Now, one of these, we're gonna cut from the bottom up in three locations. So let's just take one of these. On that very first score line here, you're gonna cut up just halfway. So I'm looking to cut right on that score line. And we're gonna go up about halfway. We're gonna skip and go to the pencil line. This is where the pencil line is very, very important. And then once again, we're gonna cut right on top of there and go about halfway. And then the last score line here. And again, halfway. All right, so we've got the first one. Now you can see these are exactly the same, but for them to interconnect, the cuts have to now be on the top, right? For these to slide together. So I'm gonna turn this one and I'm gonna cut down halfway on that score line. Again, this is just visual. Skipping over to the pencil mark and we're gonna do the exact same thing. And now coming over here to this one and cut down halfway. Now let me show you how these come together. I like to work with the long ends first and these are going to just slide into each other, kind of like interlocking. If they don't reach at the bottom, that means you need to cut that slit just a little bit deeper. And then we're gonna come over here to the second one and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So it's kind of like jury rigging it. And then we have one more here at the bottom. When these are all connected, the bottom of the card stocks should be flush. Now this one doesn't want to cooperate because you're all watching. There we go. So they should all be flush, which means all the paper here should be nice and even. Do you see it? Now what you're gonna do is give that a good tap to make it fold. You are gonna open up these back two panels, kind of like a V here on the back. Do you see it? Lay it flat on your work table. And then it's just a matter of taking these two flaps and just collapsing it. I know it's kind of crazy how it works, isn't it? Look at that. Now, what I like to do is go over it with my bone folder so that those little expanding panels are all in place. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you don't wanna do the designer series paper, which is what we're gonna do next, you can obviously stamp on each of these panels. But I'm gonna give you an important tip if you're going to stamp or put the designer series paper on. Obviously, this is optional. I'm gonna move you in just a little bit closer for this. And I'm gonna tell you that your pencil now is gonna be your best friend. You're gonna label all the right sides as right. So I'm putting paper on each of these front flaps and I'm putting the R here to represent the right side. And then you're gonna do the L on this side to represent the left side. I like to do this while it's assembled because when it comes apart, the pages or the flaps invert. So they look slightly different. Now, if you take it apart to stamp, you can easily see where the images have to be placed. Now for the designer series paper, I've already cut my strips, but I wanna to talk to you about where this paper came from. This is a designer series paper pack that is in the new annual catalog that I have literally fallen in love with. It's called Les Shops, and it's French for the shops. This is the one that I've cut up and you're gonna need for this specific card one and three quarter inch strips. But look at the patterns. Now here's one thing about this paper. There are coordinating stamps and dies. Now look at the dies. So you've got the porch lights, you've got some greenery and all kinds of cute things that are not even part of the stamp set. So they're accessories to this. But the best part about that is that these dies will cut out these images. So if you don't want to stamp in color like I did, you don't have to, which means you can get quick and impressive cards very, very easily. Now you're gonna to want to buy that as a bundle because you'll get a 10% savings. But take a quick look at these papers. So here's the first one, isn't that cute? 
And of course, if you don't have the dies, you can use your scissors, but I love the dies because look, you're gonna get perfection every single time. It's quick and it's easy, so you can build a whole town scene. Wouldn't this be cute for those book lovers out there and this one for those bakery lovers like me? But like all Stampin' Up! Designer Series papers, they are double-sided, which means you have some great all-year-round patterns here that you can use on all types of cards throughout the year. Stripes, florals, all kinds of fun things. So I wanted to make sure I point this out so that you don't miss these, of course, in the annual catalog. And here's the back side of this one with the little houses. Lots and lots of fun. So what I did is I cut those one and three quarter inch strips. Now I'm gonna tell you that each one of these panels, as you can see, has a higher elevation. So inside the project sheet, I gave you the levels to cut each of these, but it's the angle that's the trickiest part, right? So let's do these back two together and you'll get an idea of how this goes because I have the rest finished for you because I thought that was a little redundant in tonight's premiere. Let me bring in my silicone craft sheet because we're gonna eventually need that and I've got my pencil. I'm gonna lay this on top of here, which is gonna be my right side. Now I'm folding this back so that you can see. Obviously, if you wanna take it apart because it's marked, you can do that. So I'm just gonna hold this here and I'm lining this up. So this is gonna have that quarter inch border around the outside edges. Now keep in mind that if you did not score or cut this right, it can be off by a smidgen, like a 16th of an inch. But don't panic because none of us is perfect. What we're looking to do now, we know that this height is right, is we're looking to decide where the other end is going to fall. So I'm just gonna kind of hold this where I want it. And I can see here on the other side that this is gonna to need to come about here. This is the edge of the cardstock. Do you see how I've marked it? All right, now what we're gonna do is we are going to take our trimmer or you can take your scissors, it's up to you. I like those nice straight edges because I can't do anything straight. And we are gonna cut from that mark up to the corner. Don't start down here. If you do, it's going to rip that little corner. You need to start where there is a straight edge. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm looking to align both that pencil mark and that tip in the track the best that I can. And we're going to cut away what we don't need. So let's move that out of the way. And then you're gonna come in here and you're gonna hold this up before you go crazy. Yep. It looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and flip that over. Let's add our adhesive here to the back side, And then this is going to go here. And you're looking to leave that small margin all the way around. Again, you're gonna need some self-forgiveness because none of us cuts and scores perfectly, which means this can be slightly off. Now let's do the other side. And again, you're gonna fold this back I'm holding it where it should go so I have that nice little border all the way around. And then once I'm happy with it, here, you see where the cardstock is? I am gonna make a little mark on an angle so that I know where that begins. Because I did the measurements a quarter inch smaller than the panels, you should be very, very close and require very little trimming. So pencil mark here, tip here. Make sure that you're staying on the flat side when you cut so you don't ruin that tip. And let's give this a little cursory look because it might need a little bit of a haircut. Let's take a look here. That's pretty good, I think. So let's go ahead and put that off to the side. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna flip that upside down and we're gonna add our adhesive. I knew this was gonna happen. Look, I ran out. But you know what? Here's a question I get all the time. How do you refill this? So let's just do it together. You can buy refills for them. I use the Stampin' Seal Plus. That's my favorite because it comes out in tabs and it's very, very easy to use. Now, tip number one, don't grab it by the adhesive because you don't want to gunk it up. Put the adhesive roller flat on your work surface. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your cartridge and you're gonna line up these two sprockets inside of here and push. And then flip it over and then put your cap on. Now, you can tell mine is good and gunky from all the adhesive on my work surface. And if that bothers you, you can go ahead and take a little bit of an alcohol prep pad or a cotton ball with alcohol, and then I'll take that right off. And then here, we're gonna just fold this back. And again, you can disassemble the whole thing by removing it from the slots so that you can obviously put these on a lot easier. But I thought it was easier for me to describe if I showed it to you this way. Now, I did the exact same thing with each of these cascading panels that I've labeled. Now, I didn't think you needed to see the whole thing all over again and over again. So here we go. Here it is all finished. Isn't this really, really cool? 
Now the designer series paper can play up a huge part of this card because the focal point is going to float on the front panel. Now let's talk about that and we're going to talk about where you sign. So let's put that off to the side and let's bring in a piece of basic white cardstock. And this is where I'm going to do some stamping. And of course, I'm using that bundle that I just shared with you. That's called a Let's Go Shopping. Lots and lots of fun. I think you're really going to enjoy that. So I've pulled out the pieces I'm going to use. So we've got our base image here. And you can see that this image is really, really large compared to the stamp. So you can ink it up this way. Did I say the stamp? I meant the ink pad. There you go. And then we're going to press that here. Keep in mind that there are dies, so you're going to want to separate those images so that you can die cut them all at once. And then, of course, we've got the top piece, which I opted to use on my image here. I'm going to go ahead and ink that up, and we're going to stamp that here. Oh, but it just keeps getting better and better. There's little lights that go inside of here. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna to try to do this without getting my head in your camera view. There's no way, because I'm too old. So let me just line those up the best that I can. There we go, thanks for the pardon. So cute, because photopolymer is going to allow you to line things up almost virtually perfectly, because the stamp is clear, and it turns the color of the ink. Now, if you're like me, and you're Italian, Italian bakeries are like my thing, I love it. So I had to do a bakery scene, and again, you might see my head. I'm looking to bring that black line down to the windowsill and I'm looking to align those edges inside of here. You're going to see my head because I can't align this if I don't have my head here. There we go. Just want to make sure that you see how I've got it there and then we'll press. Not perfect, but okay. But look at the stamp set has little words so that you can decorate the windows. I'm trying to keep my head out of your camera view, but this is really hard to do. Okay, you get the idea. It's not perfect, but I've got one that is. And then I think we need to dress up our little bakery. So I've got a a plant there. This is what's so fun. And wait till you see what we do with this. This is my little signboard, right? Because I think a bakery has specials or our flower shops have specials. So I'd like, why not a bakery, right? Now, obviously I colored these with the Stampin' Blends markers and I have those all done for you. It was quick and easy. These areas are small. So if you don't want to blend, you don't have to. It's very, very simple. Any coloring medium is going to work for this. But I want to chat with you about one thing that you might be looking at when I show it to you thinking, how did you do that? So let's talk about this little sign. I'm using the bronze Stampin' Blends marker. This is alcohol based, like all the markers I used for this. These products are all in my online store. I find that this is kind of the perfect brown for signs. Now, if you don't like this brown, there's lots more to choose from in the natural tones markers that come in great combos of different browns. They can be used uh, not only for skin tones, but they can be used for all kinds of nature scenes, woods, animals, etc. But this goes with the bronze and ivory, which was the original two that Stampin' Up! came out with. So I'm going to move over now to the light basic black. It doesn't look black by the cap, but it is. Let's remove that. I'm using that chisel tip versus the brush tip. And we're going to cover this black. Now I know what you're thinking. You color that black, Lisa. You're really not going to get to see underneath it. Well, you're right, but I have a great idea for you. So if you've ever been by a flower shop or a pastry shop and any, actually even cafes, they have these little signs outside with the everyday specials. Oftentimes they're just always done in chalk, white chalk, color chalk, and they really draw your attention. Well, I thought, why not chalk? I've got an old chalk marker here. Now Stampin' Up! used to sell this. We don't anymore, but I found one that's just as great for you. And I linked it on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. You're looking for that chisel tip. And I'm just going to kind of go over this and just create my little text. And then when this dries, it's going to look exactly like chalk. Isn't that adorable? All right, let's show you the pieces that are all finished. So let me bring those in here. So I have my bakery pieces. And I've got my sign and my pot. Let's put these together first. We're going to push those off to the side because I want this to be one tall building. So I'm going to come back to my silicone craft sheet and I'm using my take your pick tool to kind of help me lift these things up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to attach these. Now I love how they've made this so there's room here, but the silicone craft sheet is actually going to play double duty for me. I don't want the full width of my adhesive because I'm not going to need it. So I'm going to run half on my image and half off. Now you would never dare do that on your work surface because otherwise you're going to be fighting that sticky spot the whole time you're crafting, right? 
So I'm gonna fold those extra tabs to the back. Nothing is wasted because that comes out in tabs. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm looking to align those edges of that window so that it's as straight as I can get it. And we're gonna push those together. So now we have one building, but it's gonna get better because I found some pieces in the die set. Oh my gosh, it's a canopy. Now I die cut these ahead of time, but I wanna show you how to put them together. You're gonna to need liquid glue. Now the multi-purpose liquid glue is sold in my online store and as much as I love it, the tip is not narrow enough for these kinds of things. So what I did is I took that glue and I poured it or squeezed it inside the precision tip glue applicator. Again, not a stamp on a product, but I love it in my studio. So I have it linked for you on my website under shop craft room favorites. So many of you said that has changed your opinion about liquid glue because it certainly has changed mine. So I'm gonna take off the silicone cap that comes with it and we're going to shake this down. Now the glue is very, very thick. So when you fill the bottle, you gotta be patient, but look how tiny you can get those dots. Isn't that fabulous? So I'm just gonna hold it here with my finger and I'm gonna put little tiny, tiny dots inside the areas where I want the glue to stick. The beauty of this glue is that it's very strong. So it's going to hold a great bond. This is going to align to the sides and this near the top. And glue, of course, gives you a little bit of shimmy room, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and move that and move that because we're gonna clean off that tip before we cap it. There's nothing worse than a gunky tip when you're gluing. And now let's attach the canopy. I decided I wanted to put it, of course, over the door, but I wanted some dimension. So that's where the dimensionals are going to come into play. And I am going to put one right here in the middle. Now, if you want mini dimensionals on either side, you can. I'm just speeding up the process for tonight. And then I am going to center this so that this is gonna fall over the door just above the sign. Oh my gosh, is this not adorable? I love it. But how are we gonna get that to float on the front of here and then add our other images? Well, this is where we're gonna make hinges. Now that's what they call them in your project sheet. And you're gonna need two of them. And I've used these on previous fun folds I've shared with you. All right, let's bring in that silicone craft sheet. While it's folded, I want you to go ahead and I want you to add adhesive to one side. Now it's important on how you put these together because remember this moves freely in the center where it's been slit. You want the crease towards the inside and don't worry, I know that's ugly, you're not gonna see it. So I'm just gonna visually center this and I'm gonna attach that here. And let's do the same for this one. You know, don't you love when you make a mistake and then no one knows but you? <laughs> I do it all the time. Again, we're gonna put the crease towards the center, don't cover the center that you've cut, just come up close to it. And now look what's happened. This has created the hinges for the image to float on. All right, now we've got the hinges and now we know that they're the right length. So let's go ahead and let's add adhesive to each one of these. Take your fingers and I want you to hold that down because you don't want that to stick before you need it to. I'm coming all the way down and I am gonna tack that in place. Now, here's what's gonna happen. When you open this and expand, you're gonna see that this gravitates from the front and it gives you some movement. Isn't that fun? All right, let's take these other two images now. We're gonna flip those upside down. I'm gonna grab my dimensionals. Thank you all for the grace. It's good to know that I'm not the only one who has made mistakes, right? Let's release those paper backings. I can't live without that take your pick tool. It's like my best friend. So I'm gonna take my board and you can tuck it behind or you can tuck it in front. But keep in mind, if you tuck it in front, that's gonna limit the mobility. So I'm gonna create a scene so there's some dimension here. And then I'm gonna place this one here. Look at how cute. Love it and perfect for display, but you're thinking, how does this make a greeting card? I got you covered. So let's go ahead and let's flip this over and let me show you what I did because I have several other samples to share with you. I did the exact same thing with white cardstock here that I did with the designer series paper. I cut the paper panels that are inside your project sheet. I made a mark and I cut on the angle. I stamped them and I did them independently, which I personally found was the easiest way. I do have one where this whole thing is covered because this is going to fit in an A2 medium envelope for mailing. It's gonna be thicker than normal. You will likely need additional postage depending on how much embellishments that you have added. 
So this is the first one, which is a great miss you card, isn't it? And a great display and really creates lots of character. But let me show you these others. Now the next one is a mishmash of stamps. Love it because you can mix old with new. So the earthen textures first is available as a bundle and you'll always want to buy as a bundle if it's available because you'll save 10%. So the stamps with the coordinating dies. And just like I showed you with Let's Go Shopping, there's extra pieces in the die set as accessories that are not part of the stamps that work beautifully together. But I also added in Nature's Prints and the Natural Prints dies. Now these are sold separately, but wait until you see what we got. So here is this cascading card. Oh, that silver foil. Okay, so here's how it's going to stand. And again, you can see how that image cascades, so it's not flat against here. I did opt for white on those hinges because that's the color of my card base. But I wanna call your attention to this. Take a look at that vase, isn't that cool? I actually heat embossed silver embossing powder on silver foil. That gives you the neatest texture. Don't be afraid to try that. I did the same with my greeting here on the cardstock, added some metallic embellishments, and then I brought in that silver foil with some of those greenery pieces from those two die sets. So there's how it expands. Let's flip this one over and you can see, because it was already white, I was concerned that my individual panels would really not look well. So I used a sponge dauber to add some color around the outside edges, stamp some of those images that I had used here, and then added my greeting. So a nice, nice thank you card. And I think definitely a card that can go to men as well. Just think of the possibilities for this. So here are the two we have so far. Now this last one is for all of those out there who absolutely love florals. So I use the Petal Park stamp set. Now this stamp set also has available the Petal Park Builder Punch. And you can see here that it's gonna punch out these flowers here on this side. They are available separately. Now you're looking at this thinking it's confusing. Good news, it's photopolymer. So these fill the outline images or it's a two for one. You can color these if you'd like. And then these pieces fill and build one another. Now I mixed it with the sister stamp set called Sentimental Park. You'll see how that works in a minute. And then I brought in some greetings from Lasting Joy. I'm finding I'm using this quite a bit. So here is what I got. Look at this one. So bright and cheerful and definitely very feminine, but instead of playing up the pink on the base, I played up the garden green that's in the designer series paper. So like these, I let the designer series paper dictate the color palette for me. And you might be thinking, well, is that suspended? It sure is. I wanna tell you that there's various shapes of frames that have die cut intricate pieces. So this one's in vellum. And then there's another piece that slips underneath that frame. These are incredible. You're not going to want to miss them. And again, flat backed pearls here for the embellishment and the expansion. Now wait until you see the back of this card. Are you ready? This one has the one piece. It was challenging. I'm not going to lie. I took the white cardstock and I literally marked the corners and where I thought the center was. And then I cut it by hand with my scissors. That was easier than my trimmer. It wasn't perfect, but look, I was able to kind of cover up that flaw with one of those flowers that I punched out and of course added my greeting. Now, of course, lots of different ways you could create these and for different occasions. And I would love to know which one is your favorite. Do me a favor, pop down right now in the comment below and let me know. Your feedback is always very important to me and I'd love to know which is your favorite. And of course, I love to hear your suggestions on how you would change things. All right, there's a couple things I wanna make sure you know about as well as when I'm gonna be back next with you. The next thing you need to know is about this. It's bonus days right now here in July. Every time you spend in an increment, you're gonna earn bonus dollars to use in August. You can find out all about the qualifying order amounts over on my website at lisastampstudio.com. Click on shop. And then of course, don't forget, Stampin' Up! came out with some brand new online exclusive products, which means they are not in a publication. Now we cannot guarantee the availability of these items. So if you see something you love, you need to buy it because it may or may not be coming back in stock. So there's some great things there you're gonna to wanna to get your hands on. Go on to shop and under online exclusives, you'll be able to find that information. And then I wanna make sure you know all about Stamp Studio memberships. So many of you told me how much you are enjoying this. 
$5 a month gets you a brand new tutorial project to your inbox every Monday morning that I design. Does not matter what country that you live in. I would love to have you join us. And guess what? Those photos are not watermarked, nor are the tutorials, which means that you can share those with whoever you'd like. The only stipulation is you cannot sell them. And if that's not enough for you, there is level two, where I include everything in level one, plus a fun fold card tutorial, a discount for my PDF tutorial library, and I do product giveaways every month. Mark your calendar to come back with me live next Monday. It'll be July 31st. If you have enjoyed tonight's video, do me a favor. Thumbs up here on YouTube helps me immensely and subscribe to my channel. And if you like free stuff, head over to lisastampstudio.com, scroll to the bottom and click on the word subscribe. Then I'll sign you up for my free weekly e-newsletter where I share a project idea with you for free that's not shared on any of my other platforms. Grace, thanks for all your help tonight and I look forward to having you all join me next Monday. Have a great evening.